Hi there! In this video I am going to show you how to make a Grantham button. What's a Grantham button? I hear you ask. Well, watch the video and all will be revealed. So let's get started. Well, the first thing to address is what is Gina's Grantham button. Basically, it's a basket weave button, the technique for which I first um, published back in 2013 in my first button book. The original button is actually based on a button on a coat, an 18th century button on a coat. Um, a British coat in the Met Museum and that particular button is made with metal threads. So I devised a way that I felt that it could be made. Roll on the years and I've managed to acquire a couple of antique versions of this button always, always done in metal thread, which helps to keep the structure. However, I discovered that whilst my initial technique is correct, there might be a few hints to state that the button themselves may have been made using uh, pins or something like that, um, and then used as a covering, which is kind of hard to explain. So I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and thought, well, how can we do this to create a button that would be easy for anyone to, to make and over and over and over again? And that's where the Grantham button came up, was conceived. So the kit consists of a series of templates, much like our uh, Yorkshire templates that have been specially developed and designed and um, are completely unique to us. There is no historical um, evidence or anything of the sort for this. These are entirely unique to us and designed by us. And what they're there for is to create, this one is made using tapestry wool, a lovely little basket weave button. Now, I'll see if I can just bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. And this can be used in the round, so you can make uh, a lovely soft tactile button, or you can use it as a covering so for a flat button so you can still get the sort of old look um, or you can go with something entirely modern so why Grantham button really it's very simple Gina B Silkworks is currently based in Grantham Lincolnshire in the UK and to my mind made like that they rather resemble Grantham gingerbread, which is quite famous and an 18th century recipe. So there's a little bit of a tie there. And um, these are actually from Hawkins gingerbread. And I'll pop a link down below because they're absolutely lovely. And they're using an 18th century recipe. So any of you history buffs may well like that. So the kit includes six templates. As I say, you've got threads, you've got basically a tapestry yarn. So you will have um, an Appleton's tapestry. You will also have a DMC embroidery skein and you'll have two needles and instructions to work the basket weave. And you'll also have instructions to work this ribbed design, which again is entirely new. I am also working on a booklet with some really different um, weave techniques um, using the looms. So for instance, working something like this, 
or something like this. And of course, there will also be in the booklet other ideas for things like um, overweaving. So you can actually get different patterns. Now, you can, of course, just use the regular weaving, go at it and um, use different colors and you will get all sorts of different designs as well. Now, six different sizes, you can therefore make six different. So we have, these are all made using tapestry wool. So you can see a general idea of the sort of range of sizes that you can make. Now that's with tapestry wool. Go down to a thin thread. So for instance, this is the smallest using a number 12 pearl cotton. Let's see, let's get zoomed in here a little just so you can get a better idea. And so you can see how very small that is. So your range will depend upon the thread that you're using as well as the loom that you're using. Okay, so let's move those out of the way now that we're zoomed in a little bit and I will show you how to make them. So I'm going to show you with the wool and I'm going to show you with the largest template. Simply because, you know, it's going to be easier for you to see and you can refer back to this, okay? And in the instructions, you've got how to make, sorry, the glare is a bit glary, isn't it? Let's see, can I, I'll have to have it at a tilt. Um, in the instructions, you've got how to make the ball or dome and also how to make a flat button cover. And as I say, you also have the ribbed variation instructions and then some hints to give you ideas to try to, to get different ideas from with what you're um, using these designs. Okay, so let me just move that down a bit so that we don't get the glare. Now on the largest for the tapestry needle, you're going to, tapestry wool I mean, you're going to need probably about two meters of wool. You can always add wool if you need it. Um, why do I always come in here without my little scissors? Right, fortunately, my paper scissors are pretty new and so therefore still sharp. Okay. Now I'm just gonna thread up a tapestry needle and just a hint, if you fold over the end, you haven't got that blunt uh, edge of your thread and it makes threading wool so much easier. So just a little hint there. I'm just threading that just so that I can do the weaving. Now, what you need to do is, I start at the bottom and you need to hold the thread at the back. Now this is probably going to be a little bit difficult for some people trying to just get it so that you can see without too much glare. This might be difficult for some people. So I would suggest that you use a little piece of tape, which I thought I had cut one. Let me just cut a little piece of tape. And just tape your starting thread at the back. I don't anymore. Um, but I've been developing the sort of what the right size is for the, the tabs and the template and everything else for so long that I just hold it. But if you just place a little bit of tape. Now, let's get this so there's no glare. So I have a tab here and then the two at the top. So I'm going to come round up to the top um, right tab, okay? And then I'm going to go across, and you can, you know, you can move this around, this doesn't matter, to the next one. And then, as I come around to come back to the third, to the first tab, I'm going to just flick that so that I can get underneath. I'll go ahead and show you, and then come around. And that 
should be properly you've got over 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 so you you already have a proper weave there so it's going under then over and, and so on okay use your needle if you're off center just poke it into the hole there so that you can come up and be center and now the weaving begins and this is basically all that you need to do so you're going to come around the loop do not put this on too tightly um, otherwise you run the risk of not being able to take the piece off of the uh, template which is exactly the same as with our Yorkshire button kits you have to sort of get used to just having an easy tension um, it will all sort of it you also need an easy tension for weaving you will get used to it and as you weave that tension will tighten up as well okay so we've come around this is back to the first one and then we're just basically going to work in opposition to whatever the weave is on this side so now i will be going over and then under up to the next tab just as we did before and now as I come here I have three to work around so I'll go over this one under that one because you see that's in opposition to what's at the center and around and basically you just keep working in this way weaving and going around the tabs. Now because of the glare, I will just try to keep working this. Always sort of just be gentle, use your needle to push towards the center. And just keep going around and weaving. And this is very mindful and therapeutic in actual fact. And I would recommend that you start with the thicker thread because it does take longer with thin threads. And even on the old examples, you know, it, as I say, I've only ever seen them in metal thread. Um, no, I tell a lie. There is one in a Dutch museum, I think that is using a soft thread. And there is a very, very old button that may well use this. I'm not going to state categorically on here yet because I'm currently studying some images of it um, on a doublet. So it's a good, with the three, the central, um, three marking is quite distinctive from a what I would say is a checkerboard um, type weave but is also called a basket weave you know in the past basket checkerboard um, there's not really a distinction because we haven't got images we just have um, you know for instance advertisements that may say either or we don't really know what that actually is and so you just keep weaving and as you can see it's building up nicely at the center and it's going around um, each time around the tabs and that's what's helping to keep its uh, shape and help you to keep everything sort of lined up and even for weaving so as I say I've never seen any templates like this um, or weaving looms quite like this and so that's why we decided well we'll we'll keep it in the the tradition of um, other types of buttons name it after a place and name it after a food because of course there is the Dorset knob 
which is a uh, uh, cake. Uh, no, it's a bread, I think, like a roll, a bread roll. So, or a cobblestone. <laughs> and you just keep weaving. Okay, so I've worked around. I could probably do another row or two. Um, you should work as close as you can towards the edge, but not entirely to the edge, okay? And try to make sure for an even button that all of your threads on each of the tabs, you have the same number, okay? Which in my case is seven, okay? so. What you now need to do is decide if you're making a ball or a dome. We're going to make a ball. So the first thing to do is to tie this, the end of your thread, just make a little knot. It doesn't matter what kind of knot, but basically because what we want to do is make sure that when we do the next bit to draw it up, that we're not pulling all of these threads out because they have just been continuous. And then we're going to do one more row. But this time we're going to skip the tabs. So I'm not going up the tabs, I'm going around. And this will act as a drawstring to make the ball. So just over and under, just as before. And if you ever want to add a thread, in most cases, adding it near a tab, um, so if you want to change color or you want to, um, you haven't, threaded it, cut enough thread, add it near the um, tab at the back and then you can tie the first to the last before you take it off of the loom. So there we've gone all the way back around to our knot. And then basically all you need to do is pop off, remove that bit of tape as well pop this off from the loom. And so there you have a nice little woven piece. Now, of course, you could um, use these as well for decorative elements. If you cut those loops, you could use them as decorative elements on embroideries and so on. So that's something to consider. Um, right, just get some stuffing. I'll tell you something that I quite like using as um, stuffing for these, just because it's natural really and it's handy, as I often have uh, cotton buds <laughs> to hand to do these. So basically, you'll have your right and your wrong side, um, and that will be determined by this, you can see sort of a little pocket. And then all you need to do is gently draw up You'll stuff those loops into the inside first. It's usually the easiest way to do it. And then you can add a little bit of whatever you need. Um, if you have trouble adding the stuffing, go ahead and put it in a little bit in first, then fold in. You just basically want to manipulate it so that you get a nice shape and that shape can be whatever you want. Um, it can be domed, it can be a ball.
but you want those ends pushed in as well. Okay. And then you've got your basic shape and you're quite happy with how it's stuffed. Then just go around again. And this is why tapestry yarn is quite nice to start off with. You'll just work through and split the threads so that you get a shape and you're just drawing it together. And you may have a few um, loops that need tightening more than others. And then you'll go across and just basically you're just closing it up and closing it up as, as required by your yarn and the shape that you've stuffed to. I do like to do another sort of running stitch around and then to go across the face of the button because then I can pull any of these uh, longer loops that may be sticking out, I can pull those in. And that's something that you see on the uh, historical ones. You see another thread holding those, holding the shape in place. So I'm just going to weave that through Oops, okay, I won't do that knot, just a little knot. And I'll just cut that, but normally I would weave that through as well. But. And then give it a good roll around in your hand because that will give it a nice ball shape. And there we go. One ball button. Now, if you, um, one ball grand thumb button even. Another thing that you can do is if you don't stuff it too much, you can come up and work back down and do a few tight stitches and that will give you a sort of uh, donut sort of shape uh, like this one. You can put a bead or something like that in and you can see it depresses in. So that's a really nice way of doing it. Or you can go ahead and work um, extra stitching in a different color and that will make it up. But as you can see, it depends, different yarns, different sort of ways in which to do it. If you're using a thin yarn or a thin thread, you would almost always build it up. So this one um, using a number 12, you can see that I have worked the same row twice so that it's built up. So to show you that on with larger, and that really is the easiest way to work the with the fine threads, and that is actually historical, the fine metal threads. It's not just one piece of thread and lots and lots of weaving. It's, it is built up in um, plies in this way. So the template kit is available on our website and um, booklet with new designs should, fingers crossed, be ready. Well, I'm not going to say when, but shortly. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy the buttons. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.